result of which were DECA's were banned from Canadian stations for nine years. Uh, the word broadcasting prohibited appeared. Yeah, not for broadcast. Not for broadcast. Yes. And this recording is sold under the express condition that <laughs> it not be broadcast on the radio. Well, the uh, it, the answer is, is is as simple as your question, and that is uh, the record people, including Herbert and Edgar, and Emil, and Eldridge Johnson felt that uh, broadcasting of recorded uh, music would reduce sales rather than enhance them. That was strictly it. They thought it would be, they'd be competing with themselves. Did they ever change their opinion on that, though, as time went on? No, they, well, yes, sure. I think both <laughs> Herbert and my father uh, uh, changed their opinion on that. I don't know about Emil or Eldridge Johnson. I, I don't know. Sure we changed, because radio became a friend of, uh, of, uh, of uh, records. I mean, they, they go together. In fact, there even was a very powerful magazine in the industry, uh, which was bought by Billboard, uh, called Radio and Records. They went together. And I'll tell you one thing more. When the Record Academy, of which I uh, am a member, uh, uh, decided to broadcast the Grammy Awards, after a number of years of that, I said, hey, folks, you're fascinated by the glamour of television. But have you stopped to think that radio and records go together Television and recorded music do not. They are not natural partners. From that moment on, the Grammys are were si simulcast on radio and television. Great. Okay, Next. One, one more question. Just say, say one, one more. Yep. Yep. Very quick one. I'm just curious if the, uh, if the copyright of the painting as a trademark covers the dog itself as well. <laughs> Like, could, the, could somebody market the dog without the gramophone and still be infringing on the copyright? Uh, let me say this. That is a, a, uh, a technical question, and I'm not a copyright lawyer, nor any kind of lawyer, to answer that. But I would say this. Uh, there's a difference between a trademark and a copyright. Uh -huh. A big difference. For one thing, copyrights will eventually expire. Trademarks never do, provided you keep renewing them. But at any rate, uh, you, are you saying that without the dog, or the dog alone could be used, or the gramophone alone could be used without a, a, any <coughs> infringement? Oh, the dog is certainly recognized. At any rate, I don't know, but I don't know why anybody would want to. Who would want to? Well, you said you've had all sorts of dogs imported. They didn't have gramophones imported. <laughs> uh, actually, they did import gramophones. All of the trademark models that you have here were made in Camden, New Jersey. No, no, so I meant for the purpose they, of the selling the dogs, that the dogs are independent at your grandfather. Oh, 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 okay. 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there'd just be a big legal battle if somebody else oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> they, the, and the they, that's all the dollars. industry needed was right. another legal battle. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, just the, the very last one because he had his hand up. No, very last question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did you ever meet your grandfather? Did you, did you have a relationship with him? Yes, he sir. never had the pleasure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he, he died two months after I was born. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'll tell you a sad thing, but you see, all you guys make the mistake of reminding me of things that I wanted to tell you. I'll tell you this, which is sad, but I'm telling you sad commentaries about my family that, as you know, the bio of uh, Emil uh, came out in 1926. Uh, Emil Berliner, maker of the microphone, uh, he uh, died three years later, and uh, the book had not sold well. So Bob Merrill, the publisher, uh, offered the unsold copies to Emil's children at 25 cents a piece. They refused. They should have, the ingrates should have bought them <laughs> and, and sent them to public libraries yeah. all over the world. But they weren't going to spend 25 cents a copy 
on their benefactor. That's my relatives for you. Oliver? <laughs> yes, sir. As a token of our appreciation for you oh, taking oh. the time to come here, really appreciate it. I think we'll all agree that this has been one of the best presentations we've ever had here. Oh, thank you. Uh, Said it's been years in the making. Is so this a shape of pen? Yeah, we'll put it in the same. Oh, it's engraved too. Wow. Hold it up and show it. Uh, you should have taken off the price tag. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is valuable. I have to trade a gramophone for this. <laughs> Thank we, you. We very much appreciate Thank you so Thank much. You. I will now sit. Mark Carolina for arranging this entire day. He's worked on it for years. It's been a flurry of activities uh, in terms of emails going back and forth, all the specific arrangements. There were many things that had to be worked out, and uh, it's certainly an honor, and we're Thanks. truly indebted Thanks to you, Mark. Thank, Thank you, Mark. you very Thank much. You. So we have a special cake here we'd like Oliver to cut for us, and oh. then we'll have refreshments. Maybe try to get and, and we'll, we'll give you a first run of the reference. Yeah, no, I realize. Okay. Let's go. Oh, a little bit of this. I will not bring you